So we've got our finished grade. So now we need to go ahead and add an assembly so that we can push that down our alignment. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go ahead and create an assembly. And we'll just call this uh, New Road. Again, you can name it whatever you want. And we'll leave everything default here. And I'll go ahead and hit OK and just select where I want my marker to be. So this is the centerline marker for our roadway. And we're going to attach our pieces of our road as our sub-assemblies of our road to this assembly marker. So I'll go ahead and open up my tool palette. And I'll pick the lane that I want to use. So I'm going to go to the Lanes tab. And we've got a 6 meter wide lane that we want to add in on this assembly. So I'm going to go down to my properties and I'm going to tell it the width of this is going to be 6 meters. And I'm just going to simply, actually i got one more thing I need to turn off. Turn off my potential pivot. And I'll go ahead and select my lane. Now I came in on the left. That's the side that it said it was going to come in on. If even, I know that my lane on the other side is the same width, so I'm going to go ahead and just select my marker again, and it'll, it'll add that on the right side of my assembly marker. So we've got some curb that we want to add, so I'm going to go ahead and select the curbs tab of my tool palette, and I'll select Urban Curb Gutter General. We're just going to use the defaults um, inside of this. You can, you can stretch and pull this curb any direction you need to to meet requirements. Um, of the municipality or the reviewing agency's uh, code, so uh, we'll we'll just we'll just leave the defaults for today. And I'm going to select the outside edge of that corner there on my lane, and it throws my curb in. Now we're going to go ahead and build out the right side, and then I'll show you how we'll populate the left side. So I've also got a sidewalk that I'm going to put in. So I am going to change the inside and outside boulevard width, so we've got a grass area in there. So I'm just going to put a 1 meter inside boulevard width and a 1 meter outside boulevard width. Again, the slope, this is calling the slope for my sidewalk, so I'm just going to say that's at 1%. And I'll go ahead and stick that on the back of curb. And you can see how the sidewalk is shown. Now I've got one more thing. So we've gotten, we've, we've created design basically from the center line of our road all the way out to the edge of our sidewalk. So now we need to tell it what to do when it's going to uh, slope to daylight automatically in the corridor. So I'm just going to pick the uh, basic side slope cut ditch uh, sub-assembly. And I'll tell it I want it to go 3 to 1 to start out for the cut slope and fill slope. And this is actually, this, this particular sub-assembly would actually put a ditch in for us automatically. But I'm just going to zero out the information for that ditch and add it to the edge of my assembly. So how do I get this information to the other side? I'm, I want it to be consistent on both sides, so I want it to be the same. So I'm just going to select the curb and everything past the curb, and I will mirror that information to the other side of my assembly. So now I have the assembly that I'm going to push down my center line of my road. It's going to read the vertical alignment of my profile that I generated, my profile at this point right here. And then the assemblies will sub-assemblies will take over and give us our finished product. So we now have everything we need to generate a corridor. So let's go ahead and create that corridor so we can start to look at, at, this, uh, at the vertical design and make sure that we're balancing earthwork-wise, things of that nature. So I'm going to create a corridor, and we'll just call this... Uh, new road and we'll make sure that our alignment is selected that we need so our, our alignment that we want it to travel down is our new road the profile we want it to read is our finished grade and we'll select the assembly that we just built and tell it to target our existing surveyed surface and we'll select OK and our corridor is built so we want to see a surface uh, finished grade surface from our corridor. So I'm going to select the corridor. I'm going to right click and go to corridor surfaces. Here's where we'll tell it to generate a surface from our design. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create a surface. Uh, we are going to tell it a different style because it's going to be a different look. So we'll give it a uh, one meter, five meter design. We may go back and change that 
or copy this style and change it to where you can see more contours. Matter of fact, um, let's do that now. Let's just copy this style and let's rename it uh, 0.5 and 2 and take off the copy just so you can see how a style, uh, one way of style can be built. We'll go into contours and tell it we want to change the interval. So I want to change the interval to 0.5 meters and 2 meters for the major interval. We'll change the color here. Again, we'll just change it in the style this time just so you can see it. And we'll make those all blue. Go ahead and hit OK. And our style is selected. Again, this would be in your company template. So you would just pick this style from your template. We'll give it a code of the top surface. So this is going to be the actual, pay, the actual finished surface. And we will select our overhang correction to read the top links. We'll go ahead and add a boundary. I don't want it to go outside of the extents of the daylight on either side of the road, meaning wherever it touched existing ground uh, from our design. So I want to add the corridor extents as our boundary. It will rebuild the, co the corridor. And here is our surface. Now we can select that surface and we can look at it in the object viewer. And you can see that it does not have um, triangulation that goes across uh, from curve to curve uh, like we've had in the past. It's because of that corridor boundary. 